My name is Jerry Hudson. I'm Dean of the College of Media and Communication, and I welcome you to this uh, event today that is um, uh, one of the most favorite things that I do is get to introduce some uh, people to you that are important to the college and to the university. I um, have a few people I'd like to recognize at the front table here. We have uh, two Hall of Fame recipients, uh, actually three Hall of Fame recipients here uh, with us today. Uh, Dr. Dennis Harp, who served as uh, my associate dean for a long time and actually the guy who hired me. Uh, we have Dr. Billy Ross, who started the uh, entire program uh, at the College of Mass Communication at that time, and, and uh, we owe a great deal of attitude, uh, a great deal of, uh, <laughs> of attitude to Dr. Ross. <laughs> Uh, and, and his lovely wife, Avis, um, Dr. Ross served as the uh, chair of the department from 1970 to 1986. We have Chuck Hutchinson, who is a um, uh, Hall of Fame recipient and uh, very instrumental in our, in our program. We also have one of the first photographers who taught in the, in the college, Herschel Womack, uh, visiting with us today. So I, I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Before we introduce some other special guests, let me uh, tell you a little bit about the, uh, the person uh, whom we're honoring today in terms of the Bessler Distinguished Lecture Program. Uh, if you read in her bio, she said that Dr. Ross actually hired her as a token woman uh, to be in the, in the program. But uh, she's much more than that. She is um, a person who has made a significant impact on the lives of many professionals. Uh, she has uh, uh, two Pulitzer Prize winners that she claims that without her instruction and writing skill, they would not have uh, achieved that, uh, that distinction. Um, she also is uh, crediting herself with making sure that Scott Pelley uh, was the anchor of CBS Evening News in, in 60 Minutes. So uh, Kathy Bessler is, uh, is a, a dear friend and uh, someone who has made uh, truly an impact on the lives of of several, several of our students. Uh, I talked to Kathy last week right before uh, we were to make final decisions about uh, table arrangements. Uh, Kathy uh, took her husband to the hospital for a checkup on Thursday and uh, they decided to keep him. And so he is in the hospital and uh, I would like for you to include him in your prayers uh, as you uh, uh, make acknowledgments uh, about the health of uh, John Bessler. John was the first dean of the medical school when it was created uh, here at Texas Tech. So they have a long history with Texas Tech and um, they have a long history with our program. Kathy has also been uh, in uh, not real good health, but she is up driving. She is uh, uh, trying to make things go uh, in this uh, hard time with John. So again, uh, please let me encourage you to to keep both of them in your prayers. Uh, we have some special guests that we would like to uh, recognize today, and I ask Dr. Kenton Wilkinson if he would come up and, and introduce those to you. Okay, we have some uh, very special guests indeed, uh, folks who have traveled from far and wide in order to be able to participate in the Reaching Audiences conference that uh, Dr. Eric Busey and I have organized. And if I could ask uh, the three volunteers, impromptu volunteers who had the misfortune of sitting next to me at the table and uh, are now going to be uh, pressed to work. Um, as, I, as I call your name, um, those of you who are visiting from out of town, uh, please stand. We have a, a gift here for you and then we will uh, applaud everybody at uh, after everybody's been, been called and, and stood up. First, uh, Robert Affey, who is faculty in the Department of Telecommunications and the International Studies Program at Indiana University in Bloomington. One each. April Alejandro, who is Director of Client Management at Mercury Mambo in Austin. Alberto Avendaño, who is Director of Business Development for El Tiempo Latino, 
at the Washington Post and also is a magna cum laude graduate of the College of Media and Communication. <laughs> Dr. J. Allison Bryant is president and founder of Play Science, a research consulting and innovation firm, and I understand she did graduate work with some of our faculty. Randy Crimmins, senior partner at GoThink, a retail marketing and business consultancy based in the Woodlands, Texas, where he leads their analytics, loyalty, and digital integration efforts. <laughs> Salomon Dayan, who is digital group account director at Lopez Negrete Communications in Houston. Carrie Edelstein, president and founder of Research Narrative, a media research and consulting practice with clients such as Netflix, Robicorp, uh, Viacom, Media Networks, and New York Public Radio. <laughs> Juan Faura, author and expert in Hispanic culture and marketing. His publications include The Whole Enchilada, Hispanic Marketing 101, and Hisp Hispanic Marketing Grows Up. <laughs> Betsy Frank, Chief Research and Insights Officer at Time Inc., where she oversees all the company's research efforts for the first time integrating its consumer and marketing research organizations. <laughs> Bill Seitzler, Senior Consultant with Smith Geiger, a custom media research and strategy firm in Los Angeles, where Dr. Eric Busey worked for a couple of years and also a member of the National Advisory Board for the college. <laughs> Has Dr. Thorson arrived? Okay, many of us will be hearing from her uh, later. We will give her her mug. We're not going to cheap out on the mug. Okay, she is the Associate Dean for Graduate Studies uh, at the University of Missouri School of Journalism and will be giving the Morris Lecture uh, this evening. And then uh, our speaker this afternoon, Mr. Arturo Villar, publisher of Hispanic Market Weekly and former editor of the Latin American Feature Syndicate, publisher of Opiniones Latinoamericanos. Okay, before uh, introducing our speaker, there are some people we need to thank. Uh, as always, these events don't happen with just, you know, uh, faculty input by any means. Um, by the way, I'm the Regents Professor in Hispanic and International Communication here in the college, and along with uh, Dr. Eric Busey, uh, organized uh, this conference, as I said, with a, a lot of help from people. Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. and Dean Jerry Hudson, who assisted us a lot and gave us good counsel on a number of fronts, and if I recall correctly, um, is the one who had the idea of combining the market research and Hispanic media aspects, so we appreciate that. Uh, Annie Ruland, who always keeps things on track, uh, not only for these sorts of events, but also on a day-to-day -day basis for the college. She's uh, the current holder of the Staff Award, and I know that's been earned at least a dozen times over, if not many, many more. So thank you, Annie. Uh, Emily Balky, who does an excellent job with event coordination, even from airport waiting areas in the wake of Texas blizzards. Melissa Woffert and Drew Byrne and a group of uh, very dedicated and talented students who work with them in the design area who always make the college look great on paper and online and set an ever higher bar for us to try to reach and we really appreciate that. It's hard to reach uh, how good we look on paper sometimes and thank you very much. Um, Dr. Trent Seltzer and the students who are involved in the brand new uh, media Lab. They've been getting uh, the lab organized and managing social media support during the conference and we hope you'll be using uh, the hashtag reaching audiences and, and sharing your opinions uh, via Twitter. There are also a number of faculty and students who have been involved in a lot of the minor uh, logistical stuff like uh, transportation and uh, video recording and, and all that. I won't uh, name all of you but thank you very much for your support. And then uh, finally, I'd like to recognize my co-organizer of the conference, the Marshall and Charlene Fornby, Regent Professor in Strategic Communication. Uh, it's been a pleasure developing a strong working relationship, even though you've been here just a short time. And uh, your California cool is very much appreciated. 
Okay, uh, moving on to the task at hand, I'm very pleased to introduce Mr. Arturo Villar, who is the publisher of Hispanic Market Weekly, a key source of industry information for the Hispanic-oriented market, and the 2013 Catherine Ann Hansen Bessler Distinguished Lecturer in Print Media. Uh, you've got a program, so I'll just hit the highlights of his uh, bio. Uh, we've learned some very interesting things about his background and his journeys throughout Latin America uh, during his career, and I hope that you will follow up and learn more about his, his very interesting uh, professional trajectory. He was born in Spain and has also lived in Cuba and Puerto Rico, as well as a number of areas in the United States and around Latin America. A graduate of North Carolina State University in engineering, textile engineering, is that right? And saw the light and decided to go into journalism uh, at some point later. He has 28 years of US Hispanic publishing experience. From 1974 to 84, he was editor of Latin American Feature Syndicate and publisher of Opiniones Latinoamericanas, a monthly magazine on hemispheric issues. In 84, he co-founded Vista Magazine, a one million circulation English language weekly magazine distributed by top newspapers, um, <clears throat> excuse me, in markets of high density Hispanic population. In 1997, he launched Hispanic Market Weekly, the newsletter, and in 2002, introduced HispanicMarketWeekly.com, the first fully reported digital publication on U.S. Hispanic marketing and media. He has served on numerous boards, including the Board of Visitors at Columbia University's Graduate School of Journalism, Director of Columbia's Maria uh, Morris Cabot Journalism Awards Program, and Co-Chair of Florida International University School of Communications Advisory Council. But most importantly, he is one of the inaugural members of the advisory board for the Institute for Hispanic and International Communication here in the College of Media and Communication. The title of Mr. Villar's talk this afternoon is Hispanic Publishing from Vista to Virtual. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Arturo Villar. Hola. Not hi, but hola. <laughs> Some English-speaking uh, colleague of mine wrote hi, but I'd rather say hola. And, uh, uh, you know, we, for me, it is almost incredible that uh, 31 years after launching Vista magazine in Texas, I am back in Texas for such an event as this, which I value and, tr and will treasure because I think that this is the right kind of initiative uh, under the ca right kind of leadership to really bring, uh, I would say, the science of marketing to Hispanics to the mainstream. And that is uh, related very, very, very closely, I think, to really bringing Hispanic or Hispanics or Latinos uh, in the United States to at least the mainstream of business activities and opportunities. And therefore, it is an important, uh, I would say, element in looking for the correct integration of the Hispanic know-how, the Hispanic presence, Hispanic culture, into the mainstream America. And of course, mainstream America is not uh, only one way. It is many, many ways. It has been forever. That's what made America, after all. But in this case, I think that the, the, the tremendous presence of Hispanic culture, Hispanic population, Hispanic language, Spanish in this case, will make it a lot more difficult to really find the right level of integration and give the, those that come from Latin American countries, Spain, the right kind of presence in this whole new way of creating a better country, in this case, obviously, the United States. So 
uh, you know, when, when, I, when I launched, when we launched, actually, we were three persons, uh, uh, launched uh, Vista magazine, we actually launched it in Texas. Our first contract with a newspaper to distribute Vista as an English language magazine to reach Hispanics and to, I would say, integrate or help newspapers integrate themselves and their content to their Hispanic population was in Texas. The first contract we signed, it was with the leg legendary Charlie Kilpatrick, the publisher of uh, the San Antonio Express News. My partner and I came to his office. We had a plan. We had sent them some information about it. And uh, we sat down, explained it a little bit more, answered questions. And he called his distribution the circulation director in to our meeting and said, ask them where the, or give him, they asked us for a contract. We had it ready, obviously. He signed it, and that was the beginning of Vista magazine. And of course, we uh, had the incredible help of Lionel Sosa, another legendary uh, uh, member of our, of our launching team in, in, uh, in Vista magazine. So it was a, it was a, um, a Texas-born, I would say, uh, initiative that really made it possible for us to really, you know, get into the Hispanic market. We had done something similar in Latin America, using different uh, Latin American newspapers to insert a magazine for the Latin American reader uh, that was called Revista K. And the reason we call it Revista K has nothing to do with KK, it's just simply K. <laughs> it was because we had a, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a, 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 a phone to be able to go out and sell these, this to the different uh, newspapers. And all the different good names for an insert in Spanish then for Latin America were taken. So we gave our project Revista K, we gave it that name. And then when we finally started publishing in Latin America, we couldn't find the right name that has not been taken in some cities, in some countries, already by somebody else. And when, when our colleagues protested, you know, Revista K is not a good name for a magazine, my response was, well, would you name a car Helen? No, of course not. A luxury car, would you name it uh, some other oh. woman's name? No. Well, what about Mercedes? Mercedes is a woman's name in Spanish, by the way, that uh, was taken up by the Germans and they created one of the most uh, um, uh, important luxury cars there. So we launched Revista Car in Latin America and then we decided to do it here in the United States. We launched then Vista magazine and after going through the whole process of printing one million copies a week in treasure chest, by the way, in Kansas City, so that we could distribute it to different uh, newspapers throughout the country at a low cost, at a low uh, freight cost, we then decided that it was better to go into some kind of publication that would not entail those tremendous costs of printing. Now, Vista Magazine is still there. It changed after we left it, after our partners and I left the Vista. It changed to a um, dual language publication. And uh, uh, instead of weekly, it became a monthly. And right now, it is still being distributed by newspapers, but by Spanish language newspapers. So that seed of integration and helping the mainstream America, let's say, understand what Hispanics are all about, etc., was lost. But with Hispanic Market Weekly, which we launched in 1997, and only uh, started faxing it to really uh, practitioners of what we call the science of 
marketing to Hispanics. So it is different from just simply telling our readers, our subscribers, what Hispanic marketing is all about. It is really marketing to Hispanics. That's what we specialize in, and that's what we do. And uh, initially, like I said, we started faxing it. We, we offered a number of people that we had had contacts with through the Vista experience, telling them, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to fax it to you. That was, by the way, before uh, Al Gore invented the, um, the um, internet and uh, before, obviously, well, we could do it online. As soon as uh, we had online possibilities, then, of course, we went online uh, immediately. Now, uh, we are, I would say, in a way, and I've, I've lost my, my, uh, my guide here because I had put down some he headings where with um, slide one, slide two, slide three. And I don't know what happened when we printed it. But nevertheless, let's go to the next. Uh, OK. So when we did shift from Vista Magazine to Hispanic Market Weekly, a very specialized publication, we figured that the best thing, that the best thing we could do, the best way to go, would be to have then multiple access points, not simply printing something, putting it in a newspaper, distributing it to readers, etc., but having multiple access points, and uh, including in our, in our uh, um, content and in our offerings, mainly exclusivity, insights, and access. And that made it, uh, I would say, successful more than any other, for any other reason, simply because we just gave our readers the right kind of, uh, I would say, go ahead with it with the right kind of, of, of content that nobody else had at that moment. So it was exclusive. It was um, geared to people that don't have a lot of time, uh, that only read headlines, that uh, go into uh, uh, main street, uh, mainstream or main articles only when needed. And of course, we then discovered the opportunity for interactivity, for video, for sound, that we have integrated into our Hispanic Market Weekly. And uh, we, you know, we, we obviously wanted and, 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 and did get multiple access points for our readers. By the way, it is a, uh, a, a um, uh, subscriber-based uh, publication. When we launched it in 1997 by fax, uh, we charged uh, as an uh, uh, entry sort of, uh, uh, of, of rate for receiving and accessing Hispanic Market Weekly, we charged $49 a year. And that was less than a, caf a cafecito in, uh, in any New York uh, place. We were in New York. And a lot, a lot less even than the cafecitos in the vivirieras in Miami, where you not only get good coffee, but you also have an opportunity to listen to Cubans uh, overthrow Fidel Castro two <laughs> or three times a day, which in itself is an experience. And if you, if you listen to it carefully, and you sort of do it after a few months or, or years, perhaps, you realize how things really change in a community. And uh, right now, they're overthrowing Raul. And uh, I think Raul, obviously, is going to die before any overthrow, real overthrow. But anyway, uh, we charge less than the cost of having a cafecito and going through all these different experiences. And uh, now, of course, we charge $297 a year for our, our um, uh, subscriptions. And, uh, and we are unique in the way that um, everybody else even those are imitators uh, are offering their content for free. And we do not believe in that. I think that the Huffington experience is, uh, might be a good deal for Huffington and, and her partners, but it is definitely not good for journalists to, who, who make a living 
at giving information, writing stories, and really giving people the right kind of content, etc. So I don't know where that is going to go, but we do pay our contributors, we do pay our freelancers, we obviously do pay our staff that really puts together Hispanic Market Weekly every day because it's weekly, but uh, we put out uh, information every day and of course have uh, all kinds of directories and things that people can access to because it is a two-way way, a two-way, two uh, I would say, effort. Not only give information to readers, not only give information to our subscribers, uh, not only make that kind of contribution, but also we constantly get and we constantly request input from different areas of dis uh, different disciplines uh, of the science of marketing to Hispanics. Now, uh, Hispanics have gone through all kinds of different, uh, I would say, uh, transformations in the, in, the, uh, in the sense of, or at least in the conscience of mainstream America or the rest of America, if you want. And we have had the year of the Hispanics, and we have had all kinds of different things, you know, big debates about immigration and the protests of all types, etc. And of course, you know, we talk about the three trillion uh, consuming power of Hispanics in this country, in English or Spanish, that doesn't make any difference, really. But the thing, in my estimation, that really put Hispanics in the right track in terms of importance, let's say, in this country was the, uh, the, 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 their, uh, the way they, Hispanics, or us actually, made a difference in these last elections. The recognition by the press the recognition by all levels of leadership in this country of the force and the, the, the importance of Hispanics in practically deciding an election, or at least making it go their way as much as possible in these last elections, has really touched on the conscious and especially on the outlook of companies that want to reach Hispanics. Uh, we have obviously a long list of what we call wannabes, uh, companies that want to be in the Hispanic market, want to start marketing to Hispanics, but for different reasons. They had decided to wait or had not really plunged, had not made the move, etc. Well, let me tell you, in the last three months, we have had more requests for information, guidance, uh, etc about how to reach Hispanics than ever before. Why? Simply because of how the results of the elections, the last uh, the November elections, uh, really made Hispanics important in that sense. So yes, we do buy three trillion dollars or whatever. Yes, we have uh, all kinds of different um, uh, inputs, and important uh, uh, contributions to our culture and everything else. But that particular recognition of how important they are politically, I think has made a tremendous difference in how the rest of the country looks at, at, at Hispanics. Now, I don't know what uh, slide we're in. <laughs> we're, uh, Okay, I was obviously describing what Hispanic Market Weekly, let's go to uh, lesson number three. And uh, in, in, in Hispanic Market Weekly, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we serve people, uh, obviously, who pay for content. Uh, we try to be as exclusive as possible in terms of our uh, input. Uh, we are always looking for insightful uh, information. Uh, I have had an opportunity to talk with, uh, with Faura uh, a number of times the, this, the last night and today, uh, today actually. And I have, I think you noticed probably, 
that I have had uh, always uh, a, a pain, I have asked you to pay special attention to insights. Why are you doing this? What it is that makes you do what you are doing now? What was your experience uh, when you owned a Hispanic advertising agency? Those are the things that we, our editors, our, our, our contributors, our freelancers, are always asked to make. Those kind of questions. Why? Because it is insight, I think, that really helped develop the right kind of content for what we do. And uh, obviously, access, you know, when Vista Magazine, though it was obviously to a different type of public, it was a weekly thing, and people just waited for it, simply read it, and okay. But this, of course, because it goes to a different type of reader, because our, our, our potential to do things online in many different ways is totally different, uh, and, and much greater, of course, we, uh, uh, we give our readers, our subscribers, access to a lot of things that we would not normally be able to do. So now, not lesson number four, but what do we have here? Well, well of course, I don't need to tell you this. There is a, a feeling that young people do not read papers, let's say, or even magazines today. Well, the truth is that young people have not read magazines, newspapers, or any printed material in the past as much as we would have liked them to. These magazines, these newspapers, 20, 30, 40 years ago were read mainly by adults, middle-aged people, people that had, had the time to enjoy good magazines and, of course, to sit at a certain time, in a certain place, a newspaper, etc. Only those people, I think, were really readers of all these publications. What we have done, when I say we, I am a very large collective we, is to give young people the opportunity to read and be informed about any kind of, or any amount of different information outlets, et cetera, because it's sh they're short, easy access, they go in and they look at what they want to look at, and they erase it, or they just simply go to something else to be able to do it. And of course, the, 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 the advantages of connectivity, the advantages of uh, the use of smartphones and tablets, et cetera, and, and, and most, most especially on demand. When is it that you want to read about whatever? In our case, what is it that you want to read about how best to market to Hispanics? With all the other components that surround this kind of information activity. At two o'clock in the morning, at five o'clock in the afternoon, breakfast, lunch, whenever you want it. There it is, boom, and you find it, and you get it, and, and that's it. So uh, that is very, very important. And then customize, because we can customize our content as we see fit. And uh, you know, our designers and some of our colleagues, uh, I would say, complain a lot that uh, all of us, not me only, but all of us, are constantly suggesting new ways to do something, present something, navigate something, etc. And I know we drive them crazy, but at the same time, we sometimes find the right way to do these things, but the only way to really find the right way is to experiment in a number of things. So our format, our way now of presenting our information makes it possible and makes it, makes it efficient for everybody. And uh, of course, our, our access points are the laptop, not the computer any longer, the, the laptop, the tablets, of course, and what I call uh, to my children, I have young children, I have an 18, an 11, and an eight year old in New York. They just went through incredible cold spells. And I was in Miami, by the way. I felt very guilty about it, even though I enjoyed Miami tremendously in those days. 
But anyway, they, they, we call it the tiki tiki. Whenever I see them with their little uh, cell phone thing, you know, uh, I say, well, coño, ¿qué pasa? ¿Estás en, uh, usando el tiki tiki otra vez? And, uh, but they are obviously good users and of course teach me a lot about how to really uh, access the, young, the younger generation. And, uh, and then, uh, you, know, you, know, you know that, you know this, that they move seamlessly from one uh, to other access points very easily. And then we have then the, um, I don't know where to look, over here at my guide or over there at my thing. I like that one better because it's, there's more color, there's more color to it. Uh, we do have the, these three access points but there is one missing, and we can go to the next slide, the yellow, the yellow one, which is the, hmm, that was not supposed to be there, I think. But anyway, it is uh, obviously the redesign of the site. What I mentioned before, we are constantly redesigning our site. Sometimes we don't do more simply because it costs us more. But sometimes we are really in the verge of a redesign. We are, I have to say, we're in a constant state of redesigning. And that makes it, uh, you know, help, it helps us be, have a more flexible platform, increase social interaction, which we had not really done too much about. But uh, I just participated uh, in a conference in Miami about a social TV, uh, social TV uh, activities, uh, the social TV industry, or, or uh, it was a summit prepared by a group of people that really know what it is to be able to do social media integration into television, which obviously is a very, very important factor in trying to get as many readers as possible, as many eyeballs possible in, in what we do. And, um, and then we do also uh, share a lot of our information with other publications. We are, all, are always asking for comments. And, um, and we do have links to different social sites, etc. But what I think is the bottom line, and what I, the word that I was, the term that I was looking for as the fourth uh, leg of this uh, sort of table was flexible customization. We can do it, we do it. And it is a, an incredible joy to be able to do it and not be limited by just simply a publication that comes out every week or once a day or whatever. And then, what? Okay. Obviously, uh, the adaptable mobile interface, more functionality. Uh, one of the things that really uh, help us get to to meet the needs of our subscribers and our readership is the full content that available. We allow our, our subscribers to move into and to uh, use our entire content in multiple ways. We make it easy for them. Uh, the navigation is, is, is very well designed, I would say, or, or, or concocted, concocted. And then, of course, we are now, we don't have it yet, but we are now working on links to video so that we can have not only texts as we do have now uh, and, and all kinds of different uh, uh, possibilities, but also uh, links to video. We're going to have a, a very important video presence in our website. So we also, of course, bridge the gap by uh, direct marketing direct email marketing to our reader base. We send them all our material as it comes out uh, regularly, but also whenever we have something special that we want to sell them, not for more money, but for their attention, I would say, you know, we do email marketing to our own subscribers. And uh, we do obviously frequent online surveys to ask them to guide us as to what it is that we need to do and should be doing and uh, then, then, then we, sh we, we feature 
all kinds of different interviews with uh, opinion leaders that have nothing to do really with marketing to Hispanics. But on the other hand, gives marketers that are out there trying to reach Hispanics a better sense, and we choose these opinion pieces very carefully, obviously, or we actually, uh, um, uh, I would say, invite uh, opinion leaders to write for us on subjects that in some way touch on the whole industry and science of marketing to Hispanics. Uh, so we want to continue being authoritative, premium, relevant, respected, welcomed, and I think I deserve an applause for that. I think I deserve a hand <laughs> for this. <laughs> and finally, thank you. Finally, thank you. Now, I, I, thank you, thank you. I don't know how many of you uh, here uh, speak Spanish. I don't know how many of you here are familiar with some Spanish-Mexican songs. But I would like to close this by singing with you, if you sing with me, Cielito Lindo. Y es el lunar que tiene cielito lindo junto a la boca. Nobody sings this? <laughs> I'm not going to do it myself. <laughs> Definitely not. Thank you very much. get back into my position here. Hi, yes. I'm Jerry Perez. I'm a president of the Texas Tech and Team of the Faculty Staff Association, and uh, I thought your presentation was fantastic. Thank you. Um, my question is more technology-based. Uh, I'm a technologist, a trade, I'm a computer researcher, and I noticed I was just on your site while you were talking, and um, one thing that I, I noticed right off the bat was the English that's reaching out. And, um, yeah, but one thing I noticed also was uh, the opportunity to have maybe buttons or something, a preference button, uh, maybe linked to somebody's browser setting. So if somebody set for, you know, uh, Spanish for Mexicans or Spanish for, you know, Spaniards or for uh, Portuguese for Brazilians, there, there are plugins that you can purchase to incorporate into your content. So that if somebody has a preference, they just hit the flag, and everything changes on the site to that language. So there's technology out there that will let you do that. Will you send me? I'll give you my card. Send me some information about that technology. I'll pass it on to our geek, and uh, <laughs> who, by the way, doesn't speak Spanish, but uh, but he understands. Son of a gun, he understands because when we sometimes are our meetings, you know, get off get off uh, from English to Spanish, usually in the hot. Uh, parts of an argument, let's say. He gets it all, you know. But anyway, I will, uh, I will give you his email address so that you can then send this information, but copy me always, of course, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Anyone else? Yes. Well, again, thank you for the presentation. It was very enlightening. And kind of uh, dovetailing to what Jerry was saying, my question is, what do you tell your clients and your readers or prospective clients uh, how to address the diversity within the Hispanic Latino community? Which, of course, as you know, and all of us know, it's not just one block. How do you how do you help them address that? Well, we first tell them upfront that yes, there is a tremendous diversity. But on the other hand, there are a lot of common links there. And of course, diversity is not only because of country of origin, even use of language. You know, when I remember when um, uh, there was this tremendous debate uh, about when we started launching Vista, as a matter of fact, 20 years ago, about the use of language, what it is that language, how do you use that language? When do you use that language, uh, etc. And uh, of course, Univision was a very important part of that because they wanted then, not now, but then they wanted everybody to uh, get their information in Spanish. 
now obviously they are about to launch a tremendous uh, new um, TV, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, TV group or network in English for Hispanics, Fusion. But anyway, then it was a big debate and everybody was talking about trying to define and trying to find out how important was English language use at home, in Hispanic homes, or Spanish language. And the questions were, what language do you speak at your dinner table? What language do you speak to your children in the morning when you take them to school, down the line, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And I remember there was a, a reporter then, now he teaches at, uh, at, at Harvard, but uh, Alex Jones, who called me about this debate. I was in Spain. I was, I, it was a summer, and I was up there in a place. And uh, right after dinner, which was around 12 o'clock midnight, and uh, you know a few wines and stuff like that, he calls me to ask me all these things. And I knew uh, Alex, so I took his call. And uh, he went down the line with me. And I kept giving them answers that he was not satisfied with. So finally, he said to me, Arturo, when you do sex, make sex, what language do you use? I said, Coño Alex, very simple. Depends on who the woman is. If she's German, I'm going to talk German to her. If she is uh, Portuguese, uh, I am going to talk that language, etc. And by the way, that is still in the files of the New York Times, that, that response. So what I'm trying to say, basically, is that there are so many different manifestations of Hispanicness in this country. It's fascinating. It is absolutely fascinating. So when we can give easy answers, like, you know, depends on what language uh, the woman is, you, or the woman uses, we refer them to experts in Hispanic marketing and all kinds of different disciplines that would answer that question. And we don't take the risk of trying to be el sabelo todo, because that is extremely dangerous, as you probably know. Any other questions? Our time is up, uh, Ken. Oh. Um, I have a, a brief um, announcement, uh, introduction to make before um, I have uh, a, a gift here for Mr. Uh, Biad, and that is that uh, we also have Dr. Esther Thorson. She has arrived. Would you please stand? She is Associate Dean. Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research at the University of Missouri School of Journalism, serves as Director of Research at the Donald uh, W. Reynolds Journalism Institute, and will be our Morris speaker. So thank you very much for coming, and we look forward to your remarks later. And for Mr. Arturo Villar, we have a signed copy of Storytellers, which is a book uh, produced by our own Jared Foster. Please. Give a wave. One of our faculty members and, and uh, soon to be uh, PhD uh, recipients as well. And thank you very much for coming. It's well, a pleasure. Thank you. We really enjoy having you Thanks. and hearing your remarks. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Please do attend any sessions that you can this afternoon and uh, tomorrow of the Reaching Audiences Conference. Thank you very much for coming, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the sessions.